Okay, so here we go. This is part two, getting into some of the shoulder muscles in the key clinical anatomy. Just an overview of all the muscles here. Just going back to the scapula, rhomboids, key muscle to keep in your, uh, retract in your scapulas, scapula. Um, good posture, keeping good space and flow through the shoulder joint. Supraspinitis, looking at that more in depth. Helps with uh, shoulder abduction. Here's your external rotators, infraspinatus teres minor. Um, there's teres ma uh, major down there, a big muscle involved with uh, shoulder extension, some other mus movements, the triceps. This elevator scapula we talked about, the big old deltoid. Side view, those same muscles. So we just anterior in there. Another view. The pectoralis major. And the minor underneath there. Pulling the shoulder forward. And here's the subscapularis. It's this reddish part in here. Key key muscle. Uh, clinically, it internally rotates the shoulder. <clears throat> very commonly, it's very, very sore. When we palpate this in the lab, you'll find a lot of you, it's, it's going to be sore. Why is it sore? Because of your posture. You're internally rotated most of the days. You're sitting on your laptop, sitting and doing activities. I guess, look at these some of these motions. The shoulder flexion. As an OT, um, a lot of times your focus with the shoulder is, is on the deltoid because you're trying to get that shoulder flexion back. It's a key muscle, key movement, um, functionally. Really, um, it's been said that life happens after 90 degrees of shoulder flexion. Think of all the things you do above shoulder height. You know, you're wiping the counter, you're washing dishes, you're eating at the counter, uh, reaching into the cupboard, all these different things that happen when you're reaching up. And to lift your arm and to reach up, you need that deltoid, that huge muscle on the top of your shoulder. And people fracture their shoulder, the atrophy sets right in, and that's, that deltoid gets weakened. People have a stroke. A lot of times this deltoid is, is a big focus. You're struggling to get that deltoid back because they want to be able to lift their shoulder and get dressed and all that sort of stuff. If you're doing e-stim on that shoulder, uh, exercises on that shoulder, occupation for that, for that muscle, I'm sorry, all this for this, this deltoid muscle. So big clinical focus is the deltoid muscle, you need to know well, it has those three parts to it. The anterior deltoid, which is the front part, which really does all the work, most of the work in shoulder flexion. The middle deltoid, right in the middle, helps with abduction, lifting your shoulder up to the side. And then the posterior deltoid helps with shoulder extension. So I'm going to keep in mind with the deltoid, it's a big, powerful muscle a lot of influence on the shoulder. If it's unopposed, let's say by unopposed, the, it's not getting balanced out with the rotator cuff muscles and the other muscles in the shoulder, it'll jam that humor head up superiorly. It causes space and flow issues. So it's really good to have a nice balance, strength-wise, mobility-wise, of all of your muscles to keep that space as, it, as the shoulder moves overhead and does all the different activities. There's the delta, I had a great picture of it. Again, there's the anterior, the middle, and the posterior. So anterior deltoid for her, for him, the front, and there's the middle, and the posterior. Very easy to palpate, very obvious, big muscle, easy to get at. Okay, so I'm just gonna wrap that up. That's a quick one, that's 